Good afternoon. Good afternoon. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. As usual, I'm delighted to greet you in the master's and powerful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who alone is worthy to be praised from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. God's name is worthy to be praised. How's everybody on this Wednesday? Wednesday is sometimes called hump day. Thank God for bringing us halfway through another week. And so I don't know about you, but I'm just glad to be alive. No one that David said, let everything, let everyone that hath breath praise the Lord. Well, let me just wait for some of you to come on. Please let somebody know that the pastor is here. We're looking for you, you, and you. How are you, Miss Joan? Um, hope all is well where you are. If you're on, just put something in chat. Let me know you're there. Natalie, um, always good to see you. You're becoming a faithful follower. I'm grateful. Sister Ruby Ramsey, how are you? Thank you so much for those wheelchairs. All right, they're coming on. They're coming on. Hello, Angela Kelly, how are you? Good to see you. Good to see you. God bless you. God bless you. All right, some notices and announcements very quickly. Um, well, first of all, Sunday is Father's Day, and so we do have a Father's Day breakfast. I hope that you will come to our Father's Day breakfast. That will be at 7 o'clock. Uh, 7.30, then we'll have Sunday school, and then we will have worship. We'll be having Holy Communion on this Sunday. I look forward to seeing you, you, and you. Of course, on Saturday, the white, I mean, the JAT Club, um, they're having a movie matinee here at the church that will commence at 12 o'clock in the James E. Thompson Auditorium um, for only $15, but you'll also be able to have all of the refreshments that you want, popcorn, hot dogs, french fries, etc. So those tickets are only $15. Okay, and, and then some sad news. One of our dear members, well, two members, just unfortunate, Sister Deborah Dunham lost her brother, um, Melvin Clarence Dunham Jr. They're going to have a memorial service at the Hyde Park Christian Church at 875 East 46th Street on Saturday, I believe that's the 22nd at 10 o'clock a.m. And so we want Sister um, Dunham to know that she certainly has our sympathy and our prayers. Also, um, another of our members, it's just, you know, we gotta just thank God for life. Another of our members, um, Lord Payne, that's the husband of Miss Beverly King. He lost his niece, um, Debbie Payne Howard. And that service is going to be tomorrow, going to be tomorrow at the Community Worship Center, Seventh-day Adventist Church um, in Queens, 145-94, 176th Street. Um, and I think that service will be at 6 o'clock p.m. If you need additional information, just feel free to call the office. But, you know, and then also tomorrow, Sister Shirley Millard lost her daughter. And that service is going to be in Florida. And hopefully we'll get prompts that we can um, be in touch with her. I want her to know that she's in our prayers. I, I sent her a letter and I sent her a love gift from us. And I've talked with her. Um, her daughter had an unexpected well, all of these passings have been just unexpected, young people, and of course, it breaks the heart of their family and by extension, our heart, because the Bible reminds us that when one of us suffer, we all suffer together. All right, I'm going to um, go right into the Word. I want to finish um, Acts chapter 4, also meet us tonight for Bible study. So Acts chapter 4. Um, we're going to conclude um, this chapter today. We know that, um, you know, in chapter 3, that Peter and John are on the way into the temple. They healed this man who has been, has been lame from birth. And we talked about how the leadership and the officials became very, very upset because now Jesus was gaining power. He had died and is risen, but they are now apostles sent out to share the glorious gospel. And Peter stands up and he preaches. And one time he preaches and 3,000 people join the church. Next time he preaches, 5,000 
the Bible says 5,000 men, not counting the women and children. So that may have been up to maybe 10,000 people. And the Bible says in Acts chapter 4, verse 13, when they saw the courage of Peter and John and realized that they were unschooled, ordinary men, they were astonished and they took note that these men had been with Jesus. We preached on Sunday that when you spend time with Jesus, he'll give you a kind of holy boldness. And not only that, but he will give you the words that you need to speak. But since they could see the man who had been healed standing with them, there was nothing they could say. So they ordered them to withdraw. Um, they ordered them. Uh, this is the wrong page. Let me see. Um, okay, my apologies. Stay with me here. So they so they ordered them to withdraw um, from the Sanhedrin, and they conferred together. What are we going to do with these men, they asked. Everyone living in Jerusalem knows that they have performed the notable sign, and we cannot deny it. But to stop this thing from spreading any further among the people, we must warn them not to speak any longer in this name. Then they called them in again and commanded them not to speak or teach at all in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John replied, which is right in God's eyes to listen to you or to him. You be the judge. As for us, we cannot help but speaking about what we have seen and heard. I'm in verse 21. After further threats, they let them go. They could not decide how to punish them because all the people were praising God for what had happened. For the man who was miraculously healed was over 40 years old. I'm going to just keep reading. I think we have covered most of this. I want to get to the end of this today. Um, and we'll talk about this more in Bible study. So join us for Bible study tonight. On their release, Peter and John went back to their own people and reported all that the chief priests and elders had said to them. When they heard this, they raised their voices together in prayer. Sovereign Lord, they said, you made the heavens and the earth and the sea and everything in them. You spoke by the Holy Spirit through the mouth of your servant, our father David. Why do the nations rage and the people plot in vain? The kings of the earth rise up and the rulers band together against the Lord, against the anointed one. Indeed, Herod and Pontius Pilate met together with the Gentiles and the people of Israel in the city to conspire against your holy servant, whom you anointed. They did not, they, they did what your power, they did what your power and will had decided before, beforehand should happen. Now, Lord, consider their threats and enable your servants to speak your words with great boldness. Stretch out your hands to heal and perform signs and wonders through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. After they prayed, the place where they were meeting was shaken and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God boldly. I want to tell you that the gospel works, that the word of God works. And as we conclude, because I want to conclude this today, I'm in verse 32 of chapter 4 now, reading all the way to 37. And my prayer is that this will happen for us. The Bible says that after hearing the gospel and seeing what God had done, verse 32, all the believers were one in heart and mind. That is so important because when you one in heart and mind, when your thoughts line up, your intentions, your heart lines up, then God will show up and show out. And not only did they share the gospel, but they shared what they had. No one claimed that any of their possessions was their own, but they shared everything they had. So the rich people shared what they had. The poor people shared what they had. They put it all together, a kind of communal com um, relationship. And with great power, the apostles continued to testify to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And God's grace was so powerfully at work in them all that there were no needy persons among them. For from time, 
the dime, those who own land or houses sold them, bought the money from the sales and put it at the apostles' feet. And it was distributed to anyone who had need. They shared what they had with one another. Joseph, a Levite from Cyprus, whom the apostles called Barnabas, which means son of encouragement, sold the field he owned, bought the money, put it at the apostles' feet. Why? Because the church was the center of everything. This was not what we see on TV sometimes where they run up and put money at the preacher's feet for the preacher. No, it was given to the apostles so they could distribute it equitably to the community. Wouldn't it be so wonderful if we could work together in love and harmony, be in one mind? Paul writes to the church of Philippi says, let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus, who thought it not robbery to be made equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and he became obedient and humbled himself even unto death on a cross. Wherefore, God has highly exalted him and given him a name that's above every name, that the name of Jesus, every knee should bow and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord of all to the glory of God. Well, this is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Well, let me go ahead and greet some more of you. Thank you so much for being with me there. I'm so delighted um, to see you. Um, all right. Tawana Jamat. How are you? I trust that you're doing well in California. Angela Kelly, how are you? Virginia Chainer, um, Joan, Sister Phyllis Laria. Uh, she was our Sunday school superintendent for many years. Richard Fagan, good to see you. My good friend, Carmen, how are you, Carmen? We've got to get back to running again. That's my running partner. Always glad to see her. Maxine, how are you? Um, let's see, let's see here. Um, okay, um, Joan, thank you, yeah, yeah. She says, my sincere condolence, yes, to Shirley Millard, who will bury her daughter, her only child, um, on tomorrow. Sister Deborah Dunham lost her brother. Uh, brother Long, Lord, Lord Payne lost his niece. Hadn't really been sick, only 40 years old. We pray that God would comfort as only God can. Maxine, how are you? Um, Elaine Gutsman, how are you? Thank you for all that you do, Sister Mary Lawrence. How are you? Okay, good to see all of you. Good sister Anne Hamid. Um, Florence, thank you, thank you. I'm glad you're listening. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Angela Thornton, how are you? Good to see each and every one of you. All right, so remember those who have lost loved ones, all right? If you need additional information concerning um, any of them, please, please call the church office or call me directly. I have the information. Um, we certainly pray for Lord Payne, that's the husband of Sister Beverly King, um, who lost his niece in an untimely um, passing, as did Sister Shirley Millard, um, as did uh, who lost her daughter, and then Sister Deborah Dunham lost her brother. Um, and so we pray for all of them. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear God, we, 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 we thank you that you woke us up this morning, started us on our way, and gave us another chance. Now, oh God, we ask in the name of Jesus that you would comfort those that have lost loved ones. We lift up, oh God, Sister Shirley Millard, who lost her daughter, um, with the, with, I'm sure, and we know that leaves a hole in her heart because we don't plan to bury our children. We plan for our children to bury us. We we pray, oh God, for Brother Lord Payne who lost his niece. And, and uh, we bow to your sovereign will that you will comfort him and the family, comfort Sister Shirley Millard and her family. And then, oh God, we pray for Sister Deborah Dunham who lost her brother in a tragic um, death and an accident. Oh God, we pray that you will comfort. Um, you said that when one of us suffer, we all suffer together. And then we hear the words found in the book of Revelation and God will wipe all tears from their eyes. Now God, lift up these people that are on this call. You know every need and every concern they have. We don't come to tell you how big our problems are, but we tell our problems how big our God is. And so in the name of Jesus, I pray that right now you would touch, heal, and deliver. Thank you for the opportunity to share out of your word. Thank you for bringing us to the halfway mark of another week. 
Thank you for opportunity just to show your love in a tangible way. Thank you for loving us in spite of us. Hear our word, hear our prayer now, incline your ear to us. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, God bless you, and I will see you on tomorrow. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance. May he grant you his peace and his love. And you're going in and then you're going out. And you're down sitting and you're uprising until we shall stand in his presence through Jesus the Christ, for whom be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forever. Amen. Shalom. God bless you.